Ouch, she cried. A drop of red blood began to drip from her finger. It was not that long ago that blood problems were much more than fairy tales for the Hussein family. Completely out of the blue, I woke up. I was in excruciating pain. And initially, I just thought it was muscle spasms. And the pain got progressively worse. Then they told us the next day, in the morning, uh, in the emergency, that uh, he had a blood clot that went up to his lung. It's called a pulmonary embolism, a clot that has lodged in an artery in his lung, causing part of the lung to collapse. Here, basically, it's just compressive atelectasis. It's like a collapsed lung. Every year, more than 200,000 Americans suffer pulmonary embolisms. Over a third will die. And most have no prior medical history. The overall incidence of uh, venous thromboembolism, DVTs and pulmonary emboli, is, is higher than the incidence of breast cancer and AIDS combined. It was just a, a big, huge shock for me, because obviously, I mean, he's young, and he's pretty healthy, and um, he's not overweight. Hello again. How are you doing? Dr. Andrew Schaefer, chairman of the Department of Medicine at Weill Cornell Medical College, is the hematologist on call. Okay. So you've been here for how many days? He suspects the clot formed deep in a vein in Amir's leg. It's called deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. DVT occurs in over 400,000 Americans a year. Complications occur when a clot breaks off and travels through the circulation system. When it reaches a blood vessel it cannot flow through, a blockage occurs. This is called an embolism. 90% of the time, it occurs in the lung. A pulmonary embolism is a life-threatening event. Although oftentimes, people don't realize the seriousness of their condition. When I even checked in at the emergency, I kept telling the doctor, all I need is, uh, is a heavy painkiller and, uh, and an antihistamine to make me sleep, and I'll be fine the next day. And they said, no, we need to run a few tests, and uh, you know, we need to do a thorough examination before we uh, let you go. We were just talking also about your travel. I mean, you fly frequently? Correct. That's the younger state right okay. there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> As a financial analyst, Amir is often on long-haul international flights. DVT risks include dehydration, and long periods of sitting. Obviously, the vast majority of people who do what you do, traveling, never have any problem. And the question is whether you have some other propensity to have this. Right. And the air, the air, the air travel just triggered, triggered the actual episode. Amir will be tested for any genetic predisposition for clotting. For now, he is treated with anticoagulants to slow the rate at which his blood clots and to prevent other clots from forming. You know, something like this, you just, it's, it's something that happens to other people. Uh, you never think that, like, you know, it could happen to you. With Dr. Schaefer's OK, Amir has started flying again. I made sure that I got up every hour. I drank plenty of water. His symptoms have completely resolved. He's back to essentially his baseline fit self. All the tests to look for an inherited cause in him have been negative. There is a high likelihood that there are, as yet to be discovered, genetic abnormalities that obviously we can't test for yet. Good. Looks good. All right. Thank you very Great. much, doctor. Appreciate right. it.